What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. As most of you know, I have signed with Karate Combat and I will be making my debut later this year. But I had a fantastic question coming in, which is just very pertinent to my situation. And it was, what techniques from karate can you utilize in fight sports and what techniques can you completely disregard that are essentially useless? So today, based on the fact that I've already started thinking about what techniques will be dangerous that I'm not used to, and what I know are karate techniques that I'm not worried about. We're gonna break down everything that you can utilize in karate in other fight sports and what you just need to get rid of. Transitions between fight sports are always very interesting because you can compete in one martial art for your whole life and think that everything you're doing is very pertinent and very relevant to the whole rest of the world, the whole rest of fight sports. But a lot of times you realize, no, it's only good in this little bubble. As soon as you step outside that bubble, it's not good. And karate combat to me is very interesting because we have a whole bunch of karate practitioners who are competing in essentially a different style. A lot of these guys have done point fighting, maybe full contact, but none of it is the same is the rule set that karate combat embraces. It's almost a little bit more like a modified MMA version of fight sports. And to me, for a lot of karate practitioners, this is gonna create issues, it's gonna create difficulties. But at the same time, somebody like myself who has the kickboxing background, when I step in there, I need to be aware of what these guys are used to throwing and what is extra dangerous that I don't often see in a kickboxing or MMA setting. So let's start off and let's talk about the techniques that I deem is very dangerous from karate, which I will be on the lookout for, which I will be training to defend against. And then we will move on and talk about the techniques which I'm not concerned about at all and which are kind of a joke. And because I have the karate background, I know which techniques I've basically disregarded, but I wanna talk in particular about why, in my opinion, they don't work. Now guys, before we get to that, if you're enjoying the episode, if you like the content idea today, please give the video a like if you haven't already. Join the channel, get subscribed, give me that little bump up to 100K, which is gonna come in March, very excited about that. I just had to do a change here. The light was shining in. I'm filming early in the morning right now, so the light was just catching the angle where boom, it was just blowing out everything. So we're back to a proper set now. A little bit darker, but what I want. So let's get back on point. And first, we are talking about the techniques that are dangerous, things that I'm gonna be on the lookout for. And one of the first techniques, which actually does work when utilized correctly, is a sidekick and a spinning sidekick. And these are things, sidekicks in particular, that we do not see very often in kickboxing. We see a little bit in MMA, but really only from the karate practitioners, but the guys who are very good. And you need to be very good to execute this technique and not pay consequences for throwing it. But yes, the sidekick is very difficult. Now, one of the things that's interesting about the sidekick, and I have experienced this before because over in China with their sport, I don't know if it's Sanda or Wushu or whichever it is, but the guys come blasting in with those sidekicks. And the first couple of times I went there, I went, okay, I have to prepare for this because the kick has so much power that the normal scoop or the catch sometimes becomes almost irrelevant and people end up paying consequences for trying to deal with it that way. So when I went over, I went, as long as I keep my hands here, right up the center, people are free to kick off my forearms, but they're not getting through. They're not gonna land any knockout shots. Whereas when people scoop, if they miscalculate and it comes up to head level, boom, they get hit. Or if they catch, but the kick has more length than they're used to, because when you throw a front kick versus a side kick, you get extra range because of that pivot. So if you go to catch and all of a sudden it comes an extra six inches and you get smashed, it's very, very dangerous. And because a lot of people don't train to defend the sidekick, it actually does work. But it is, in my opinion, an effective kick that leaves you somewhat vulnerable if you don't know how to use it correctly or if you stand completely sideways. So as you stand sideways, you expose your leg. Now in karate combat, you cannot attack the thigh, but you can attack the calf. And that's something that people need to be aware of. As soon as you turn your stance sideways, the leg becomes a massive target. And as long as I keep my hands here, I don't need to worry about the sidekick doing any massive damage. But it will definitely be on my radar for something that my opponents will probably be throwing. 
and I need to have my defense on point for. Next, the spinning sidekick. This is a technique that is very, very dangerous. It is effective in karate. It is effective in kickboxing. It is even effective in MMA. The technique is effective in MMA. I deem it is being something that actually does work because MMA is sort of the closest thing we can get to that sort of street fight where the rules are not really controlling and allowing people to get away with techniques that don't really work. So the spinning sidekick, it's even better in my opinion than the sidekick in the fact it can generate more power and it's a little harder to see coming. If I'm standing here and this leg picks up for a sidekick, it's not as hidden as me maybe throwing a jab coming around this way and executing that spinning kick. It can come out of nowhere. It can be used at a very tight range, but also a very long range. As we said, the power behind it is pretty incredible. And that means if somebody's able to come in and land to the stomach or the ribs, it can inflict so much damage. Broken ribs, wind knocked out of you. If it happens to come high, yes, you could probably get a KO. Spinning sidekicks can certainly be blocked. In fact, I am very good at dealing with spinning sidekicks. In the past, I had many people around like my brother who threw them and I learned very quickly the best way to defend. I can do an episode on that in the future if it's something you guys are interested in. But for now, I'll just say spinning sidekicks, even though they're very effective, they're not a technique that I'm really, really scared of just because I haven't had many people even be able to get anything on my stomach with it, I have a certain way to deal with it defensively. But definitely something that you should be utilizing. Now from here, let's move into other karate techniques. The one in particular that I wanna focus on, I actually just did an episode a little short on this just the other day, is the question mark kick, Brazilian kick. And this is something that comes from many of the Brazilian karate practitioners who compete in Kyokushin, I believe. Now, if you don't know what the Brazilian kick is, it's essentially me faking up into a front kick and then from there wrapping my foot over I'm not actually going to grab my foot but just giving you guys a for instance this is what would happen i would get my foot above my knee and then i come downwards with my round kick it's very similar to one two except this would be a fake and then i just transition across but i try to get that downwards drop these fast fakes with little transitions are very very dangerous in particular the brazilian kick but some of the other ones as well this is why you don't want to overreach for techniques. Yes, these are dangerous. Yes, people can utilize them. But as long as your hands stay here and you utilize Dutch style blocking, you don't create openings. As soon as you start reaching or your hands come away from your head for any reason, they think, oh, okay, it's a front kick, I'm gonna come down. Then yes, you leave yourself open. That's why we have certain ways to block front kicks which leave your head protected from the Brazilian kick. So again, something I'll be on the lookout for when I enter karate combat, people trying to come in and switch levels, but not something I'm overly concerned about because I know how to block them. And because kickboxing, Muay Thai, MMA in general have developed a very good blocking system to deal with these type of karate kick fakes which might work if people are reaching, but don't work when your hands just stay up nice and high. But they are definitely still things that the average person can add into their arsenal and still be effective with. So don't disregard them just because I'm saying I feel like I know how to defensively be competent when they're throwing at me. Now I wanna talk about a karate front kick. We see people like Leota Michida execute a front kick, which is very, very dangerous. And the reason I bring it up is because his technique is different than the Muay Thai style front kick. A Muay Thai style front kick very often is kind of up and snap through. The one that Michida throws is kind of snappy. It's very, very difficult to catch because he's so focused on the re-chamber and the quick snap at the end really drives the ball of the foot into the stomach. This is something that you do need to be very careful of. If you have a high level karate practitioner who has very snappy front kicks, very dangerous for the body, but also very dangerous for the head. Now again, similar to the side kick, which we talked about, I could just leave my hands here, but because the kick is a little bit more narrow, because we're not coming sideways, but we're coming this way, it is easier for that shot to land. So we need to have more than just hold my hands here and take the shot. We need to actually have an ability to scoop or catch. But like I said, it's a little bit different just because of the tweaks in the technique. So I will be drilling that actively, making sure I'm ready for karate style front kicks if they happen to be thrown at me. Now the final technique that I wanna talk about is something that we've seen people like Giga, I can't remember his last name right now, he's in the UFC, but some people who come in and they do like a toe punt. 
they throw with their toes right into there. And it's something that we see some karate practitioners utilize quite nicely. This is a dangerous technique. I've been hit with this technique. It comes in, it, the striking surface is so small that even with my strong stomach, the, the, the toes still bury in and it still gets deep and it still kind of wins you. I will be on the lookout for anybody I fight potentially throwing this. I will do my research beforehand, see if it's something which is in their arsenal. Many people choose not to utilize this technique because as you come up, there's a chance of catching elbows and breaking toes. But in terms of recognizing when somebody's coming in with it, you need to be defensively ready. There's not too much you can do. I mean, obviously stepping back is fantastic, but basically getting the elbow in the way is the go-to move. But as you drop your elbow, when you see it coming, your hand might lower, which exposes you to maybe that Brazilian kick or a switch, which we already talked about before. So you have to be very careful when you see this coming that you get two arms down, but you don't compromise your hands. It just more comes from my knees bending and my body rounding to block the shot. But this is something, if you want to work a toe punch, you feel like it's within your skill set, it works for your foot, you don't feel like you're gonna break those toes, add it in because it is a karate technique, which is a valid one which really does work, especially if you're thinking self-defense wise, where you can just come in with a shoe and toe punch somebody right in the stomach. Yes, even more effective when you have that protection around your toes. Now from here, let's move into the techniques which just do not work in my opinion, which I'm not worried about in the least. And if people throw them at me, I feel like it'll just compromise their overall fight style. First, from my karate background, I want to talk about ridge hands. I know we hardly ever see anybody throw those, but it's just a silly technique. A hook is so much better. If somebody decides, oh, I want to come down with a ridge hand, I go, okay, that's not going to work out well for you. Next, I want to talk about a back fist, and in particular, a spinning back fist. I, as you guys know, very, very much like throwing this technique, but technically, that is not a spinning back fist. We call it that, but it's not. Back fist is like this, when you come with the knuckles. A hammer fist is like this. That's a hammer fist, that's a back fist. When we go to tournaments or fight cards, they tell us in the rule set very often, you are not allowed to throw hammer fists. But I have never seen one referee warn anybody for spinning and coming with a hammer fist as opposed to spinning and coming with a back fist, which you are technically supposed to do. A back fist, if we throw it like this, useless technique you have there no power i'm not worried in the least about anybody throwing this against me spinning back fist if you come around and you whip like this and you catch somebody it's going to have much less solid impact than a hammer fist and i feel like you are more in danger of damaging or breaking your hand i will never throw a spinning back fist but i will continue with the spinning hammer fist this is a very interesting situation technique because Yes, I'm saying we're in the section where I will never use these techniques that are useless. Well, that's spinning back fist, but keep in mind spinning hammer fist, very effective. Next up, and this might be a little bit controversial. You guys might have your own opinion on it. The axe kick. I included it here because yes, it can be effective. And yes, I have thrown it in fights, but it's very rare where I've had any success in actually damaging somebody severely, somebody who's very tough. And you very rarely see anybody utilize it. Now, there's guys like Andy Hoog who did hurt people with it, but he's like one in a million. Somebody who can get his leg way up high, and then he has the hamstring and the glute contraction to just whip it down so fast. Axe kick, if you don't already know, is me swinging my leg up, missing my opponent, and then boom, coming down on top of the forehead or maybe over to the neck and trying to really damage them with the heel of the foot. I can point my toes and also come down with the bottom of my foot, but obviously that will not damage people. The axe kick, well, it is something that I have trained in the past, is something I've disregarded. I've taken it out of my arsenal. I don't really throw it very often. Maybe in a fight occasionally, I'll just throw it up just kind of for fun, but it's not something I actually expect to do real damage with. But it is still something that you need to be on the lookout for. It's very simple to block though. You very simply move back couple inches and the kick is going to go by or you move in and you jam it all you really have to do is have any movement if somebody's going to land this technique they basically have to just do this and freeze and then yes maybe they can land but there's no guarantee that it's really even going to do anything that's going to ko the opponent so overall it's not something i'm concerned about it's not something i advise people spending a lot of time throwing 
but throw it once in a while just so you understand the technique and it's in your back pocket if you ever want to bust it out just for fun. Now from here let's move on to a hook kick. I actually did not include spinning hook kicks in the techniques that do work and spinning hook kick is very dangerous and something we should always be on the lookout for but we're going to talk right now about a hook kick. For our spinning hook kicks the reason it's dangerous is we create momentum and then we come around and whip through but when we throw a hook kick it is basically the exact opposite of the round kick. Instead of coming here and having all my force generating from the ground, I have to disconnect my foot, I have to bring my leg over here, and now I have nothing to generate force with, and I just kind of pull across and snap with my hamstring. And it's just not a powerful technique, and it's not a technique that you really see many people land, because essentially the only way to damage somebody is to catch them square on the jaw with the heel. If you happen to do that, then sure, yes, you could KO somebody. But there's a reason we don't see it thrown in MMA very often. And there's a reason that when people do throw it, they generally do not inflict damage. I'm sure somebody out there could find a clip of somebody in MMA getting knocked out with a hook kick, but try and find me 10 clips. It's not gonna happen. So overall, throwing hook kicks, I don't think it's something that you guys need to work. And it's something that I recognize that as long as I keep my hands here, when I'm in karate combat, if somebody throws, that's it. It's done. My hands are up. And even worse for the person who's throwing it, once you hit and you land, you're going to have to put your foot back down, your back is exposed, your low kick, the thigh is exposed, and you will take a shot for it, which most likely will be more damaging than the hook kick which you threw. And the last thing from karate, which is very, very common, especially in point fighting, is people disconnecting their feet from the ground and flying forward to throw their punch or their back fist or whatever it is. And I've noticed sometimes in karate combat, the guys get a little bit high and they almost kind of like try to run forward and throw multiple shots. And this is a technique that does not work in my opinion. It's frustrating, don't get me wrong, somebody charging into you and sort of bullying and just clashing is not fun. It doesn't look pretty. It's not something I'm looking forward to dealing with if an opponent busts that out. But at the same time, as soon as you start taking the base away, the shots get weaker. There's a reason that boxers take a stance and throw from in position, and then when they move forward, they always maintain the same stance. They don't hop in the air and try and throw punches as they're soaring away. The only one that actually does work is a Superman punch that generates a lot of power, but there's a particular set of movements that help create this technique and help make it unique in the fact that you can leave the ground and still be effective but generally flying through the air and trying to throw a punch is something that does not work, something that I'm not overly concerned about, but it's something we do see from karate. But if you're doing that transition from karate to another fight style, I would say get used to punching with your feet on the ground. It is much more important to do that. It's much easier to defend yourself when your feet are on the ground and you're gonna hit that much harder. Now, the reality of this episode, guys, is yes, I've been thinking about certain techniques, but I don't have an opponent yet. Once I have an opponent, then I will start really locking in on their fight style and looking at what I have to be concerned about based on what they've already done, what they've already done in their performances. At the moment, this is just a very broad overview of what I think about karate style, what techniques are very dangerous, and which ones are not. And from this, hopefully you guys can go, okay, if I'm utilizing techniques that Gabriel says are really no good, maybe I'll just eliminate those. But if there's techniques that I mentioned today which you have not already tried to add to your arsenal, which come from karate, if they're brand new to you, or if you have not been utilizing them as much as you probably should, start adding them. Just because it's always better off to know how to throw a technique because when you throw it, you will understand more about it and then defensively, you will be more capable when it is thrown at you in the future. And on the off chance that you ever wanna bust it out, you can always do that as well. It's nice to be able to mix things up. It's one of the reasons my fight style in kickboxing has been dangerous. I utilize the Dutch style very nicely. I throw those good combos, those nice boxing hands. Then I have the Muay Thai kicks and then occasionally, I can bust out, boom, some karate technique. And that throws people off. It creates uncertainty and they go, oh, is he doing the Muay Thai kicks? Is he doing the hands which are boxing style? Or is he bringing the karate? It's very unpredictable. And that is something that is dangerous about me. But going into karate combat, I recognize those techniques will not be so dangerous anymore because they will not be brand new. People will recognize them very early. So most likely you will not see me throw the karate techniques. I will go back to the bread and butter of solid boxing and good Muay Thai kicks and make sure that I take 
the fighters in karate combat somewhere they're not comfortable with. And that is the episode. If you enjoyed it, if you found it helpful, interesting, beneficial, please give the video a like if you haven't already. Join the channel and get subscribed. Of course, I super, super appreciate it when somebody takes the time to share this episode. This is what's gonna help the channel grow the most. So if you're willing to do that, that'd be fantastic. Guys, train hard, and I'll see you back here soon for another video.